Executive action is an action just by the president. It's not pursuant to a statute passed by Congress. And in order to have those be sustained, there has to be acceptance of the policy and what the president has done by the public, by Congress, and by the judicial branch. All executive power under Article II of the Constitution is vested in the President of the United States, and the, essentially the executive power then flows from the President down to the various agencies and people who work in the various agencies. All of those different institutions have trust in the President and trust in the transparency and thoroughness of the process. Executive power has tended to contract during times when the public becomes distrustful of various actions. There was a contraction in executive power after Watergate and the resignation of President Nixon. The Vietnam War certainly was another uh, example. Things like 9-11 tend to increase the president's reliance on executive action, need for immediate uh, response, unified response by uh, the government. And as to the Bush administration, pretty clearly his post 9-11 actions with regard to people caught in the battlefield, creation of Guantanamo. In the Obama administration, I think the ones people focus on, one was called DAPA, Deferred Action for Parental Admissions, the Immigration Executive Action, which was ultimately held up by the courts as well. Clean Power Plan was an executive action, not a legislative action. That is also still being litigated in the courts. The one that everybody would answer as to President Trump, I think, would be the terrorism ban executive orders. Uh, the first one just within days of him being inaugurated. Presidents frequently start out trying to cooperate with Congress, at some point frequently end up uh, frustrated in that process, and then try to engage in executive actions to get their policies implemented.